how do you put in windows on a house that has exterior insulation? This is an interesting question. I have a window insulation video that my family made back when we were building the tiny lab that is an excellent, very long video, I think it's 25 minutes long, about how to install American windows that have the nail fin on it. These are also American windows, and when we went searching for the windows that we were gonna install on this house, we first were gonna go with a European company, which they make great stuff in Europe. We are using some European products here, but I really wanted to make sure that we were telling normal people that there is no reason to buy horrible windows in America because you can get good windows that are made right here. These are Alpen windows. They are made in Colorado. When we received them, first thing that you need to do is unwrap the plastic. And then there is a bladder on this. There's a reservoir for the gas that's filling these windows. These are triple pane Zenith series, ZR6 is the series number. So they're triple pane, the middle pane being just a film of mylar, and they're filled with argon. The argon gas is also then put into this bladder, which is a really interesting process because they're manufactured in Denver, which is a mile high. And when they come down in elevation or if they're delivered up into the mountains, the windows are gonna wanna expand or contract and you wanna make sure that they don't go under pressure and that the glass doesn't distort. So that's kind of a smart thing. I've never seen that on a window before. You have to crimp that hose that's going to the bladder and then cut it and seal it. That wire then will get tucked up into the, what's called the accessory channel. So it'll be out of sight. We'll do that later. Next, you wanna take off the two by fours that are protecting that nail fin, which is the American style of how windows are installed. So this is the nail fin right here. We wanna make sure never to rest it on us. So right now it's sitting on a two by four. So we're gonna put this in and I'm gonna show you, we could do it from outside because obviously I'm standing outside. We are on the rear balcony of the house right now, but we're gonna go ahead and install it from inside, which is what Grace and I have developed uh, along with my parents as the perfect solution for this. So. Uh, when we are ready to install this, after we've installed the buck, and in this case, we're using a thermal buck. This is part of this exterior insulation conversation. First of all, you have to do something to buck out the windows for trim. Secondly, you have to make sure that uh, you're not creating some weird condensation issues. Our house is so well insulated that if we were to just install this window right on the framing, so that heat could bleed right in and out around the, the wood framing around the window. Uh, and the frame, by the way, of a window is the worst insulated part of a window. The glass itself is the best insulated part. So if you were to do that, then that would be a potential for condensation because it would be the weakest link in our entire house. So we wanna try and even everything out and make it hard for heat to bleed everywhere in the house evenly. That's very important because heat flow is non-linear. You can see the thermal buck installation in the last video that we just did, but this essentially is gonna give us the ability to put the windows out in insulation and also to give us the two and a half inches of depth so that we can put the two inches of rock wool plus the rain screen, which is a three quarter inch uh, batten that we're gonna add. And you're gonna see all that in this video. But for right now, just know we have installed this. It is sealed and glued. This is essentially part of the building. It is a monolithic part of the sheathing at this point. Let's go ahead and get started. Suction cups on. You're gonna need two of these because one and a hand under actually doesn't work that well. Having both hands outside of the frame is really good. And, and having them level can help. But you know, you get your, you get used to it. First, you get it up in position by resting the outer edge right here on the window sill. And then she's going to lift it up and cant it and then bring it back so that the nail fin is up against the outside of the sheathing. Then we level it, make sure that the bottom is level, make sure that the gap all the way around the window on both sides, low and high, is the same. Then we can go ahead and attach it. And we're attaching it from out here so there's no need for shims between the window and the frame because you're going from outside in so we're not really putting stress on this frame at all. You got it? Now, one thing I will say is you have to use some pretty serious screws. This is a four and a half inch long galvanized or stainless steel, galvanized being a little less expensive, galvanized screw. You cannot buy these at any big box store. No one stocks it. So you will have to order this in advance. So as you're driving these screws, you need to make sure to angle slightly away so that we can definitely hit the framing, the stud that's right next to the window uh, because if I go straight in, I might just be inside the thermal buck, and that's all, depending on the gap. Okay. 
Now that it's up, you can move on if you're in a huge hurry and come back and screw all this in later. But there's still a few steps left to make sure that this thing is both weatherproofed against water and airtight. Tape. We are using 475 high performance building supply tape all over this house, including on these windows. Now, if we had run a sealant instead of using tape, we would not have done the bottom. You go up the side, across the top, and down. We are also not going to tape the bottom. And that is because in case water gets into this assembly, we do not want it to get trapped in there. We want to let it out. And that goes for all of the other materials inside of our building. If you've noticed, we've had no plastic sheeting in the house. Nothing that is called a vapor barrier is inside this house. We want, if water gets on inside, for it to be able to dry to both the outside and to the inside. So we just want water to do what it wants to do without getting in the way. Because remember, it's like a teenager. If you stop it from doing what it wants to do, it's probably just gonna screw up your life instead. Now to get this tape to really stick, because remember most tape is pressure activated. That's when it starts the curing process. You can either use a glove or a rag to really press it in. And if you can make it look old, that's the key here. You want to make it look like it's weathered um, by really rubbing it around. You can tell whether it's been pressed or not. Um, you can use the squeegee that they give you uh, as well. Either of those work. But here I've got these nail heads, the screw heads are sticking out, so I don't really want to put too much pressure on that and maybe potentially put a hole in it. Now to seal the interior back dam for both water tightness and air tightness on this window, we're going to be using a 475 high performance building supply tape called Profect. It's got one 90 degree bend built into it. So it's built for interior corners. You can use this inside or outside, but obviously on the outside, we had a flat surface we were taping. Here, we do have an interior corner. Because it's got the smaller adhesive strip, which is this side is gonna be what adheres to the window. This side is gonna be what adheres to the jam. I'm gonna start with the window small strip. So I've peeled it off. You can peel it two different ways with that backing paper. It's kind of interesting, but uh, I've peeled off the small strip so that I can make that completely even because my gap is different down here than it is up here. And I wanna make sure that it adheres to the window uniformly because I need that to make sure that it sticks. The larger surface that's gonna to stick to the jam is a lot more forgiving. I often have to remind myself that getting the paper to remove is easier if you go from the tape side, not from the paper side. So you make it stick to your finger a little bit. That works a lot better. Okay, so you want to get it started so that it's not going to put any pressure on that 90 degree fold. You don't want it to be super taut. The easiest way to do the rest of this is to put your fingers where you want this thing to land. And with the other hand, you peel off the backing tape. That way you don't create undue stress while you're installing it. I've said this about tapes many times on this channel, but I enjoy how quiet it is. It doesn't make farting sounds. It's not hard on your hands. It does not dry out. So if you start putting on tape and then two hours later, you come back from a distraction that took you away, it's not like you have to take it all off and start over again. Now you always want to inspect before you move on to the next step. I check the corners, this corner, good, this corner, pretty good. This corner, good. This corner, not good. I have a tiny little gap there that my tape was not quite long enough to cover. So I am going to fix that because if I don't fix it right now, there is no way I'm going to remember to come back later. I don't have a punch list for little tiny holes like this. And no one does. That's the high performance attention to detail. And anybody who pays attention to detail is high performance. The next step, of course, that defines it as performance is the testing, which we're going to get to next. Blower door testing, of course, at rough in and also a special test that you probably haven't seen done before at all. I hadn't heard of it until just recently. Now, this is very loud. I apologize for the planes, but uh, we have, this is weather tight. This is weather tight. And when I say weather tight, I mean both water tight and air tight. This is weather tight, although thermobuck is not technically a flashing material. So just be aware of that. We've got a weather tight seal here. And then we've got the force field, which is also weather tight. So we have a continuous, even though there's not one tape that I'm going all the way across here with, we have a complete seal. I am confident in that. But aside from the one product that I'm using here, 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 it's a remember part of a system. So what comes next is two inches of rock wool. 
a rain screen that's going to provide a ventilation for any moisture that does get past the cladding that we're going to add past that. And then, of course, on this balcony, we're going to have 12 feet of roof overhang. So is there ever going to be water getting even to this surface? The answer is absolutely not. If it did, that would be totally crazy. But if it does, we're still weather tight. And even if it gets inside the building, it can still dry out in both directions. All that stuff is what you want when you're really thinking about this. It's just every single situation that you possibly think of is mitigated. Now, you will be departing from the instructions on many of your materials because the instructions can't possibly cover every single scenario that you'd encounter in a construction site. So you want to just know for a fact that you are confident in why you are doing that. And it's part of why building science theory is helpful. What I like better than building science theory is actual testing. And so when we are done with this, what we're about to do next week, and you'll see that in an upcoming video, is a water test where we're going to run the blower door to create a suction on the house and we're going to spray this entire house down with water and force it if it's going to suck water in to do it so that we can see it and fix it not every builder is going to do that obviously so please stay tuned for that make sure that you comment like subscribe tune in next time